Su seguridad es muy importante para nosotros. Lo invitamos a observar las indicaciones del video a continuación. Para abrochar el cinturón de seguridad, inserte la parte de metal dentro de la hebilla. Ajústelo alando el extremo. Para desabrocharlo, levante la parte superior de la hebilla. Vous devez porter votre ceinture lorsque la consigne des ceintures est allumée, mais nous vous suggérons de la porter même lorsque la consigne est éteinte. Fasten your seatbelt by adjusting it around your hips. To release it, lift the upper portion or press on the release button. Attachez votre ceinture et ajustez-la autour de vos hanches. Pour la détacher, soulevez la partie supérieure de la boucle ou appuyez sur le bouton de dégagement. Welcome aboard. Please at the screen in front of you for your brief on Cartagena. Bienvenue à bord. S'il vous plaît, à l'écran en face de vous pour votre briefing sur Cartagena. Bienvenido a bordo. Por favor, en la pantalla frente a usted para recibir su informe sobre Cartagena. Cartagena, Colombia, often referred to as the Jewel of the Caribbean, is a city steeped in history, culture, and vibrant energy. Its cobblestone streets, colonial architecture, and imposing fortress stand as a testament to its complex past, a story of conquest, resilience, and transformation. Let's go on a journey through the history of Cartagena, from its indigenous roots to its rise as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Long before the Spanish arrived on Colombian shores, the region that would become Cartagena was inhabited by indigenous peoples, including the Carib and Zenu tribes. These groups were known for their advanced societies, intricate gold work, and complex irrigation systems. The indigenous communities strive in the area cultivating the land and establishing trade routes long before European explorers set foot in the New World. Cartagena's history as a colonial city began in 1533, when the, Spaniard, when the Spanish conquistador Pedro de Heredia founded the city, naming it Cartagena de Indias after the Spanish port city of Cartagena. The site was chosen for its strategic location, boasting a deep na na natural harbor and def def defensible position, ideal for the Spanish crown ambition of expanding its empire in the Americas. The city quickly became a vital hub for the Spanish empire, serving as a major port for the export of precious metals such as gold and silver, and other goods extracted from South America. It also became an entry point for African slaves who were brought to the Americas to work in the mines and plantations of the Spanish colonies. Cartagena prosperity, however, made it a prime target for pirates and rival European powers, leading to numerous attacks over the centuries. To protect its wealth and strategic position, the Spanish invested heavily in fortifying Cartagena. The construction of the city, formidable walls, and forth began in the late 16th century and continued into the 18th century. The most famous of these is the Castillo San Felipe de Barajas, a massive fortress perched on a hill overlooking the city. 
This structure, along with the city's wall and other fortifications, was designed by some of the most skilled military engineers of the time and is considered one of the most impressive defensive complexes in the Americas. Despite these defenses, Cartagena faced several significant assaults. One of the most notable was the attack by the British fleet under Admiral Edward Vernon in 1741. Known as the Battle of Cartagena de Indias, this conflict was part of the larger War of Jenkins' ear between Britain and Spain. The Spanish, under the command of the leg legendary Mestizo General Blas de Lezo, successfully defended the city against overwhelming odds, cementing Cartagena's reputation as an impenetrable stronghold. As the 18th century drew to a close, the winds of independence began to sweep across Latin America. Cartagena, with its strategic importance and strong sense of local identity, became a focal point in the struggle against Spanish colonial rule. In 1811, Cartagena declared its independence from Spain, becoming one of the first cities in the region to do so. However, this bold move led to a brutal siege by Spanish forces in 1815, during which the city suffered immense hardship. Cartagena's fight for independence was emblemic of the broader Latin American struggle against colonialism. The city's eventually Eventual liberation, led by the revolutionary leader Simón Bolívar, marked a turning point in Colombia's fight for freedom. After years of conflict, Cartagena was finally freed from Spanish control in 1821, and it became part of the newly independent Republic of Gran Colombia. After independence, Cartagena faced a period of economic decline as the once striving port city struggled to adapt to its new reality. However, the city fortunes began to improve in the late 19th and 20th centuries with the construction of the Panama Canal and the res re res res resurgence of global trade. Cartagena once again became an important commercial hub through, sorry, though it never regained the wealth and, in, and, and influence it had during the colonial period. In the modern era, Cartagena has undergone a remarkable transformation. Its historic uh, wall city and fortification were declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1984. Recognizing the city's significance as a cultural and architectural treasure. Today, Cartagena is one of Colombia's most popular tourist destinations, attracting visitors from around the world with its rich history, vibrant culture, and stunning Caribbean coastline. Cartagena's history is not just a tale of conquest and conflict. It is a story of cultural fusion and resilience. This city's population is a rich mix of African, indigenous and European heritage, a blend that is reflected in its music, a cuisine and, and, and traditions. Cartagena is the birthplace of Cumbia, Yay, cumbia, and uh, chapeta, musical genres that combine African rhythms with the Latin American influences. And its cuisine is a uh, flavorful fusion of local ingredients and international flavors. 
The city also pays a significant role in Colombia's contemporary cultural and political landscape. Cartagena is a center for literature, arts, and film, hosting the annual Hay Festival and the Cartagena International Film Festival. Uh, its historic significance and cultural vibrancy continues to make it a symbol of Colombia's diverse heritage and its ongoing journey towards peace and reconciliation. Ladies and gentlemen, we have begun our descent into Cartagena. Señoras y señores, hemos iniciado nuestro descenso hacia Cartagena. Mesdames et messieurs, nous avons commencé notre descente vers Cartagena. Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle arrived in Cartagena along with Vice President Francia Marquez Mina and they headed north of the city to La Heroica where the rhythm of traditional drum beats were waiting to welcome them to the Cabildo Cultural Cooperative. They were warmly received by attendees of Afro-Caribbean descent. During a day of reconnecting with African roots within the framework of the visit of the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex to the country, Vice President Francia Marquez invited them to learn about the history, traditions, and warmth of the Afro-Caribbean Colombians and the region. With the aim of seeking support for organizations of vulnerable ethnic peoples in this region, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were able to share with young people from the Cabildo Cultural Cooperative, directed by teacher Rafael Ramos Caraballo, who dedicates his life to building peace to the rhythm of art and culture. In addition, they held dialogue with elders, leaders, and young people of these territories, hit by conditions of inequality, racism, and violence. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were invited by the community to join them in beating the drums for peace and against racism, a shared cause that has been one of the central themes of this important visit to Colombia. Next, we go into a journey to the heart of Afro-Colombian heritage. In the sultry and heat of a Colombian afternoon, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry found themselves in a place where history is not just remembered, but lived. 
As they walked through the vibrant streets of San Basilio de Palenque on August 17th, they weren't just visitors. They were witnesses to a living legacy of resilience, culture, and freedom. San Basilio de Palenque is no ordinary village. Founded in 1619 by Bencus Biojo, a man who escaped the chains of slavery, it stands as the first free African town in the Americas. Bencus Biojo, originally from Guinea Bizo, was captured and sold into slavery in enduring a harrowing journey across the Atlantic. Yet his spirit was unbroken. He led a group of fellow escapees deep into the Colombian jungle where they established the Palenque, a refuge and stronghold for those who had freed themselves from the horrors of slavery. For centuries, San Basilio de Palenque has been a symbol of resistance, a place where African traditions, language, and customs have been fiercely preserved. The town's unique language, Palenquero, and its cultural practices are direct links to the African roots of its inhabitants, making it a living museum of Afro-Colombian heritage. When Megan and Harry arrived in San Basilio de Palenque, they were greeted not as distant royals, but as friends. The air was thick with excitement as students performed the Colombian National Anthem, setting the stage for a day filled with deep cultural exchange. The couple was visibly moved by the warmth and vibrancy of the community, a feeling that was mutual among the townspeople, or palanqueros. The visit was more than just a ceremonial stop. It was an opportunity for the Duke and Duchess to immerse themselves in a culture that has endured through centuries of struggles. As they walked through the town's bustling market, they were not just spectators, but participants in the daily life of the palanqueros. They listened intensely to the stories of the people, learning about their heritage and the ongoing efforts to pr preserve it. Vice President Francia Marquez, an Afro-Colombian leader herself, extended the invitation to the couple, hoping they would discover the essence of who we are, our spirituality, our music, our culture, and our ancestral heritage that is still very much alive today. Her words resonated deeply with Megan and Harry, who have long championed causes related to social justice and cultural preservation. One of the most poignant moments of the visit was when Megan and Harry were shown the statue of Bencus Biojo, the town's founder and a hero in the fight for freedom. Standing before the statue, they learned about his incredible journey from enslavement to liberation and the legacy he left behind. Manuel Perez Salinas, a local tour guide, shared with them the deep significance of Bencus Biojo story. He praised the couple for breaking protocol by choosing to visit the town, a gesture that spoke volumes about their commitment to understanding and honoring the history of the places they visit. For Megan, the visit was particularly meaningful. As an African-American woman, she has often spoken about the importance of acknowledging and celebrating African heritage. Standing in San Basilio de Palenque, she expressed how honored she felt to be in a place with such rich and powerful history. Harry too was moved, describing the experience as incredibly moving. The Duke and Duchess did not just come to observe, they came to engage. When a local guide, Juan Manuel Martinez Padilla, shared his hope 
for an end to racial discrimination. Harry responded with a commitment that resonated with the community. We're working on that. It was a brief but powerful moment. A reminder that the fight for equality is ongoing and that solidarity across cultures and nations is crucial. As their visit came to a close, the couple addressed the community, speaking both in Spanish and Palenqueros, a gesture that further in, endeared them to the people of San Basilio de Palenque. Their words were not just about the past, but about the future, a future where the lessons of history guide us towards a more just and inclusive world. Megan and Harry's visit to San Basilio de Palenque was about a bridge between cultures, a meeting of hearts and minds across continents. The people of the village saw in the Duke and Duchess as allies in their ongoing struggle to preserve their culture and history and to ensure that the legacy of Bengu Biojo continues to inspire future generations. As the couple departed, the streets of San Basilio de Palenque buzzed with the energy of a day that will be remembered, not just for the presence of royalty, but for the celebration of a shared humanity. In the end, it was a reminder that the stories of the past are not just to be told, they are to be lived, honored, and carried forward into the future. The people of San Basilio de Palenque, Los Palanqueros, protested the depiction of Bencos Biojo in chains in the original statue that was erected in the square. The statue was meant to honor Bencos Biojo, the founder of this first free African town in the Americas. But the image of him in chains was seen as a symbol of oppression rather than liberation. The community felt that this portrayal did not accurately reflect the spirit of resilience and freedom that Bencos Biojo embodied. In response to the protest, the statue was removed and modified to better represent Bencos Biojo as a leader and as a liberator. The chains were removed and the statue was redesigned to depict him standing tall and free, symbolizing his successful fight against slavery and his role in leading his people to freedom. This change was important for the community as it aligned the statue with the values of dignity, strength, and resilience that Bencos Biojo represents to the people of San Basilio de Palenque. San Basilio de Palenque is not just a village tucked away in the Colombian countryside. It is a living testament to the enduring spirit of resistance and the unyielding pursuit of freedom. Its history is a rich tapestry of, of struggle, the village of San resilience, de Palenque and cultural pride, escaped African slaves. woven over centuries by a community and the language that refused to be broken in Africa. by the chains of slavery or the pressures of modernity. The recent visit of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry, the founder of and the Meghan Markle, is literally worshipped has brought the renewed attention to hey, this hey, remarkable among village, ourselves, we call the founder where the people of Bilbo. San Basilio, he founded Palenque their presence is not just a visit, a nice gesture, the the it is a recognition 
of their endurance the struggle of free black and a celebration of their cultural resilience. Social organization by age groups as the Duke from the African and Duchess world. walk through the village, the youngest learn to fight to live. They are Many greeted Columbia not just by from people, here. but by the living history of San, of San Basilio de Palenque, a history that is etched this is the into main every drumbeat, every dance, our instrument for communicating with every word spoken in Palanquero. The story of San Basilio de Palenque is not just about a place. It is about an endurance spirit of a people who, despite centuries of oppression and hardship, have never lost sight of their quest for freedom. It is a story that continues to unfold, inspiring all who hear it to recognize the power of resistance and the strength of community.